Hello everyone, I'm Rich Stocks. Today I'm going to talk to you about financial freedom, specifically about the Lord's tithe. Don't go away. I'll be right back after these announcements. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. We are proclaiming God and His Word as the one source of spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. Now, here's Rich. Good things come from the Father of light. Shadow of turning or changing his mind. Hello, friend. I have a question for you. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life? Go to our website, richstocks.org. We have a video for you called, What Must I Do to Be Saved? Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of free videos. If you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new teaching. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites you'll find very helpful for nutrition and wellness, mineraldoctor.com. For weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together we are sending God's word to the whole world through television and social media. Every week we hear from people in Africa and they're hungry for the word of God. We have a special new project and I want to give you the opportunity to be part of this. The studio we've been using to film our broadcast is no longer available. So we've released our faith for $50,000 to build our own studio. And it's all coming in through people just like you. To have a look or to sow a seed, go to richstocks.org and watch our video called Partner Project 2023. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. To show my appreciation, I want to send you my book, The Secret of an Unshakable Life. And I look forward to hearing the great things that God's doing in your life. Hello, everyone. Today, we're continuing our series on financial freedom. I believe this is uh, lesson number six. Uh, let me just review from last time we looked at the first step to financial freedom. Let me read this scripture again. Found in Luke chapter 16, verse 10 through 12. Jesus said, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you've not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you've not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? That's Luke chapter 16, verse 10 through 12. So we said that evidently God, the first place that he looks in someone's life to see if they're faithful, it's not how much you're praying, and I'm not knocking prayer, not your church attendance. The first thing that God looks at, what do you do with your money? Yeah. I know there's some people that, especially if you didn't watch last lesson, it might be good if you're tuning in and you didn't see last time to, to watch that before you watch this so you can get the foundation for it. But this is what Jesus said. If you've not been fan, and that story was a story about a man who had not been faithful managing his master's money. That'd be a good title for a sermon for some of you preachers when it Managing the master's money. That'd be good, all right? I'm tempted to just get off on that right now. I better keep moving. But Jesus talked about being faithful in three areas. And in that story, they were all the same. Number one, he said that which is least. Well, that could be when you have a little bit versus having a lot. But in that story, that which is least, he was talking about money. And then he talked about the unrighteous man that he went so far as to say, God looks at what you do with the, your money to see if you qualify for true riches. There's another sermon, preachers. I'm going to weigh free sermon titles today. Qualifying for true riches. What are true riches? Who knows? It could be a lot of things. The glory of God, all kinds of things. It says that if you've not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, that's Luke chapter 16. Let me turn over to the next page to make sure. Luke, that's Luke chapter 16, verse 11, to be specific. That if you've not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust true riches? The implication is no one. That God won't. He's looking and said, hey, if they're not faithful with their money, 
Forget it. And we're not talking about buying salvation. Salvation's a free gift. Be sure you watch that video on our website called uh, What Must I Do to Be Saved, talking about the free gift of eternal life. We're not talking about that you're trying to buy God's favor. You're trying to buy a healing or any of these things. But I am telling you, I'm not telling you, I'm just, I am telling you what the Bible says. It says, if you've not been faithful with your money, who will commit to your trust true riches? Now, Jesus said those words. You can get mad at the preachers all you want, but Jesus is the one who said it. So in that story, all three areas that he said to be faithful all had to do with your money. That, which is least, in light of many other things, that would be money. As important as money is in light of, let's just save in physical health. Now, the two of them work together. You know, you can spend all your health to obtain wealth, and then a friend of mine says, and then spend all your wealth trying to buy back your health. So, yes, if you had to pick health, I'd say is more important. Of course, eternal life is. But what about all these years down here, those 70, 80, 90, 120 years, whatever it is that you're here or being alive and remain till Jesus comes? Money's very important. We know that. So I would agree in light of, of many other things, we could say money would be the least. And then it's also, it's the unrighteous man. And, and we're coming right now up to today's lesson, the Lord's tithe. He said, if you've not been faithful in that which belongs to another man's, who will give you that which is your own? We're going to see that the tithe, being faithful, we could say this, Last lesson was called the first step to financial freedom, which I said was being faithful, but it goes right into this lesson. The first step, my brother and sister, hear me carefully. The first step to true financial freedom, that's financial freedom based on God's word, the first step, and the one that you can't skip, is to bring the Lord his tithe bringing the Lord his tithe. I know there are people watching right now, Rich, that's Old Testament, it's done away. I'm going to pick that apart. Oh, fuck, you were picking feathers off a bird, so to speak. We're going to pick it bare. You will not be able to watch these next few lessons and still believe that tithing's been done away. It will not be possible. So if you're absolutely dead set that you're not willing to change your mind about it, you might as well turn it off now because you're not going to be able to believe that any longer after the next two or three or four lessons. I don't make many guarantees, but I guarantee it. You just would have to just reject the word of God. We're going to pile the scriptures on uh, just like if we were in a courtroom and we had to prove our case. That's how I like to teach. And I just one or two scriptures just pile them on. So the first step to financial freedom is bringing the Lord the first tenth of all your increase. Here we go. Leviticus 27, verse 30, the Lord's tithe. It says, then all the tithe of the land, that means tenth, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. And it says, it is holy unto the Lord. Again, I know there are people rich that was under the law. We're going to look at this in detail. When did the Lord decide the tithe was his? We may not get to it in this lesson today, but we're going to get to it. But the point being, at least in this verse here for now, we're going to begin with this, this statement that God said that one tenth, the first tenth of all the increase of the earth is his. The Lord's tithe. Now, the word tithe means tenth, and the reason that I use that terminology, the Lord's tithe, is because there were there was more than one tithe in the Old Testament. There were several. But we're just going to look at one of those for now. We may look at the other tithes. There was the Lord's tithe, the second tithe, the third tithe. There were several tithes. One tithe was just taken once every three years. 
So if you broke that down, say, well, what's the percentage? Well, that would be three and a third percent per year. So they had the Lord's tithe, which was 10%. They had a second tithe, which was used for a totally different purpose. It was 10%. Now they're up to 20. And now they they had a tax that was 10%. Now you're up to 30. And then they had a tithe called the, the tithe of the third year every three years that they took. So that's three and a third percent per year. So now you're up to 33 and a third percent. It's amazing stuff you get into the Bible. It's just, it's if you're having half as much fun as I am, when you listen to this, as I am teaching it, you're in good shape because I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. But no, it says that all the tithe, that it belongs to the Lord. Again, don't get excited. If you believe that's been done away, we're going to, we're going to get into that. Okay. So this is the Lord's tithe. Now, here's what I want you to, to realize. You can demonstrate your faithfulness in all three areas that Jesus talked about in Luke 16 by simply bringing the Lord his tithe. Here we go. Let's, let's look at that more closely. What's the first thing he said? Faithful in that which is least, you'll be faithful in that which is much. So that means this, tithing, regardless of the size of your income. There are people who, because they don't have much, first of all, there's no one watching who has nothing. Nothing, nothing to give. There's something you can give. Maybe not even monetarily today, but, but we're not talking about giving per se. Tithing technically is not giving. You're bringing something to God that already, that just, that belongs to him. You're honoring him by doing that. But when Jesus said, the first thing he said, the first area of faithfulness is that which is least. Now, in that story, he was referring to money, but let's just talk about a quantity or an amount. Being faithful, when you have a little bit, he says that you are a person who he knows would be faithful if you had a lot. I used to think, I've worked just about every position in a church. I, I, we helped at a church for years. My wife did the music. I was actually played in the music. I don't claim to be a great musician. Um, I ran a bookstore. I was in the toilet ministry. I did the books for the church. I helped in the children's church. I helped with the teens for a while. So I, I've kind of, you know, had a well-rounded background, so to speak. But I used to, when I was doing the books, and it wasn't that big of a church. So, you know, you see what everybody's giving or tithing and, and everything. And man, I would look at some of them and think, man, I, we were so broke back in those days. It's it's not even fun to talk about. I'm thankful for where the Lord has brought me from. Let me just tell you that. Um, I've shared some of my stories. I'm not going to do that today, but some, sometime I'll just take a broadcast and just share some stories with you. So if you're watching me thinking, oh, it's easy for me to sit up here on television and talk about these things, I know what it means to, to be extremely broke. But I never saw myself as poor. I remember one time I was working at the church, we had a food bank. And once a month we gave food and, and, and the church somehow had gotten involved with a, a sort of with a government program. So it was kind of a combination. And I had never gotten any food from the food bank, even though we were in bad shape. I wasn't pride. I just never saw myself. Well, we got food to eat. Even though we don't have any money, you know, we're, we're not starving. But one day I looked on the wall and there was a sheet of paper and it was, uh, it said the income guidelines for giving food and all of this. And I looked over at the salaries, the annual salaries. And I looked at the one that said poverty. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was making one fifth of what it took to be poor. What do you call that? I, I mean, we needed five more categories just to get to where I was. I'm not kidding with you. I'm not exaggerating at all. God is my witness. I looked at that and I never, I never considered myself poor. If somebody said, 
are you in poverty? I would have said, no. I mean, we had a house and my kids had clothes. None of us were starving. Now, I knew we have run out of fuel a few times, you know, in the middle of the highway and some things, our cars sometimes didn't have heat and air conditioning, but I did not see myself as poor. I have a word for you today. That, that really is one of your first steps out of where you are. You got to see yourself as God sees you. And you, if you be faithful right where you are today, even if you have, you're on the verge of nothing and you'll start bringing the Lord his tithe, things will turn around. They have to. Well, see here, he said to put him to the test. But I looked at that piece of paper on the wall and there were those income guidelines. I looked at the one that said poverty and I thought, whoo, I wish I was making that much money. Again, I'm going to say it again, my brother and sister. I was making one fifth, 20% of what it took to get up to the poverty level. I know what it means to be poor. And I know what it means to be broke. And I'm not broke anymore. I'm not poor anymore. Again, I didn't see myself as poor then, but according to those guidelines, I was in poverty. And I, I did have the thought that, well, maybe we ought to at least start getting some of this free food. So we did eventually start, you know, getting some food. And again, I don't know why we weren't doing it all along. But we start taking advantage of that. Take advantage of there's some that some there, somebody wants to give you something. Bless God, let them give it to you. Don't be prideful and all that. God says that's how he's going to bless us through men. Jesus said, men will give to your bosom. Yes, the windows of heaven will open, but I've never went out and, and just money laying all over my yard. I sort of take that back. I was walking my dog one day and I kid you not. And he's, I looked over and he had something in his mouth and he was carrying money. I don't remember if it was a... $20 bill or what, but this is many years ago. And I thought, what a good dog. All right. Even my dog bringing money. The guy that wrote the book years ago, money cometh. Yeah, it's coming. Even my dog is bringing it to me. I mean, and God, I guess if he can't get people to do it, he'll use animals to bring it to your house. The Bible is true, my brother and sister, and it's going to work for you right there in Africa, right there in the midst of what looks like abject poverty. The first thing, don't you let anyone ever tell you that you're poor. When I saw that, it didn't change anything about what I thought about myself. Just because I saw a piece of paper on the wall that said I was poor, I never said those words out of my mouth. In fact, I changed my name from Richard to Rich. Kind you not. I thought, well, I'm just going to call myself Rich Stocks. Richard's my name as a kid went by Ricky. And then when I got a revelation that I thought, I'm going to just call myself Rich Stock. So I'm right in the middle of being, according to the world standards, very poor. And I changed my name. You can do the same thing today. And I didn't plan to say any of this, but this is exciting stuff. We're talking about the Lord's tide, that one tenth of all the increase in this earth, the first tenth, belongs to the Lord and that what Jesus said about being faithful in those three areas, that which is least, that's money, but that's also when you just have a little bit of money. What I started to say, I used to look at some of the people when I did the books and I thought, man, if I was making as much as they were making, I saw them as rich. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, that amount that I thought was so big back then looks small to me now. If if that's what I was making now, I'd be like, wow, because why? The Lord's blessed me and not just added, but multiplied. The Bible says, and there's a word for someone, he will multiply our seed that we sow. Again, the tithe is not seed, but it does bring a blessing, but he will multiply seed sowed. That's what he's done for me. He's multiplied my income. A year or so ago, we were sitting in church one morning, it was offering time, and my wife leaned over to me. She says, I think I'm just going to give myself a raise. Well, I knew what she's meant. I wasn't looking at how much she was giving that day. And, and sure enough, it was just a matter of weeks, and her income doubled, doubled. Wow. Gave herself a raise. You can give yourself a raise starting today. But the first step to financial freedom and the first step to coming out of poverty and the first step of not being the world's economy, I wouldn't even know. I mean, I, I guess we're in a recession. I would have no idea. And I'm not kidding with you. The only 
reason I know it is I hear people telling me I don't watch the news. I don't look at prices. I, I mean, I guess at the fuel pump, you, you sort of can't help it. I, I pay a little bit of attention because it's right there, but I don't look at prices at the grocery store. I don't look at prices. Now, it wasn't always that way. I used to wouldn't let my wife when I did the grocery shopping because I thought, listen, I don't want you to feel this pressure. I, I would do it just to try to take the pressure off her because I knew we didn't have enough to get anything. Those weren't fun days. It's not that way anymore. I don't look at prices. I don't go to a restaurant and look at prices, read the menu from right to left. I don't do that anymore. If you can't afford to be there, you don't need to be there. If you have to look up the price, you don't need to be in that restaurant. You need to be home. Eat bologna sandwiches if you have to, whatever you have to do, but bring the Lord his tithe first. He's never going to change his mind about it. That is the first step. And I keep trying to get to this. Those three areas, that which is least, that's money. Unrighteous mammon, that's money. That which belongs to another man, we just read, the time belongs to someone else, belongs to the Lord. Do you realize that you can fulfill all three of those areas that Jesus taught us in Luke 16 about being faithful, the things that God's looking at? You can fulfill all three of those by the simple act of bringing God the first tenth. Everything that comes into your hands. That is, my brother and sister, the first step to financial freedom. It's called the Lord's tithe. The Lord's tithe. So, let me read a few more things. That which is least, unrighteous mammon, that which belongs to someone else. But here's some things you need to understand. If you're not faithful to tithe when the amount is small, you would not tithe. If you were very rich, all right, Lord, I'll say that when I used to do the books at the church and I would see people, uh, and now I don't see it as a lot of money, but then to me, I thought, wow, that's a lot of money. And I thought how easy it would be. Now I never struggled with tithing when we were uh, quote unquote poor. I mean, if you don't have much, what, what's the big deal? If all you have is $10, what's the big deal of bring God a dollar? You still got nine. Okay. But I used to think, man, if I had that, here's what I found. It does not get easier. Now, I'm not a reluctant tither, okay? I'm not reluctant to bring God his tithe. But it did not get easier when we started making more money. It gets, it gets harder. As crazy as that may sound, now I know some of you don't believe me. You think, if I had a lot of money, it should be easy. Think about that. If you have a million dollars, the tithe is 100000 so if you think it's hard to tie that dollar when you only have 10 or $10 when you have only have 100 or $100, see how it starts getting bigger. Even then that says, oh, hey, it's like $100. Well, 10,000, your tie's 1,000. Can you see how this can mess with your mind? Is that you think, I know some of you do not believe me, but as you start coming up, you're going to see that I'm telling you the truth. You might go back years later and say, you know something? I didn't believe that, that preacher that day, but I believe him now. It doesn't get easier. It gets harder. That doesn't mean that I'm reluctant to do it. Don't misunderstand me. But it doesn't get easier to tithe when you make more money because you're looking like, whoo, whoo, that's a lot of money. The tithe, my tithe is far more than what I used to make in a year. Way more. Well, if you start thinking about that too much and analyzing it, the devil will try to talk you out of it. He's a scripture twister. That's the thing more people get mad about than anything else. Preachers talking about money. Get over it. It's God's idea. These are things. The point being, the first step to financial freedom we saw was faithfulness. But faithfulness in what? Faithfulness with your money. And specifically, how am I faithful with my money? By bringing the Lord the first tenth. And God looks at that. It's how he determines your faithfulness is beginning with the tithe. Your faithfulness with your money. He's looking at your tithing. And again, I want to repeat this verse again in Luke 16, verse 11. If you've not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, that's money. Who will commit to your trust true riches? This is such a key to spiritual development, spiritual growth, becoming all that God wants you to be bringing the Lord 
his tithe. Evidently, there are true riches that are greater than money, but your faithfulness with your money is a key to those true riches. I'll tell you one of them right now. Uh, where is that? It says in Deuteronomy 8.18, you will remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Think about this. You have the wealth, but the spiritual riches in that verse is not the wealth, it's the power that God gave you to get it. I've said this on many of these episodes. Would you rather have wealth or the power to get wealth? You could lose all your wealth and then, man, you're in trouble. But if you have the power to get wealth, you could take all of my wealth, but I've still got the power to get more. That's true riches. That's spiritual riches. And we are out of time. If you're enjoying this broadcast, I want to hear from you. You can send us a text message or an email and just remember that verse in 3 John verse 2. God desires above everything else that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Hello, friend, I have a question for you. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life? Go to our website, richstocks.org. We have a video for you called, What Must I Do to Be Saved? Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of free videos. If you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new teaching. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites you'll find very helpful for nutrition and wellness, mineraldoctor.com. For weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together, we are sending God's word to the whole world through television and social media. Every week, we hear from people in Africa, and they're hungry for the word of God. We have a special new project, and I want to give you the opportunity to be part of this. The studio we've been using to film our broadcast is no longer available, so we've released our faith for $50,000 to build our own studio. And it's all coming in through people just like you. To have a look or to sow a seed, go to richstocks.org and watch our video called Partner Project 2023. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. To show my appreciation, I want to send you my book, The Secret of an Unshakable Life. And I look forward to hearing the great things that God's doing in your life. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. If you enjoy this teaching, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For additional teachings by Rich Stocks and to help us send God's Word to others, visit our website at richstocks.org. You can also send your praise reports, prayer requests, and questions through our website. The website is richstocks.org. That's richstocks.org.